Okay, so we're just going in on a blitz game, having a look at the proper full-on answer process with all its underlying constituent parts. Oh, I just noticed that one of my correspondence players has made a move at last. I think they were down to about an hour or something. I've already got two games left in the correspondence. Okay, let's concentrate. Oh, good luck to you, good luck to you. Okay, so what we got, gonna bring the knight through here. So it's not so much about time management, but we're re really trying to focus on the movement of our pieces. So we've developed our pawn out. I'll probably look at it in the evaluation. So we'll do it in the evaluation afterwards because we don't have that much time for me to talk through each of the moves. So like the first one, we'll just play the game. If I do have a bit of time, I'll go. Oh, is it my go? It's my go. <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> so push through the center here and grab as usual. That's all pretty straightforward stuff. So the faster the opponent moves in this time frame, if they're not finding the better position, then they may struggle a little bit. We like to be simple and just take stuff off the board. So I'm actually sticking with that ethos. I don't think there's anything majorly wrong with it. Maybe the eval bar won't. Oh. So this is a starter for 10 for us because we get the 20 pointer, which means they can't, their king can't castle. So in essence, we're loads of points up. But we have to still improve our position on the board doesn't mean just because we've got that that we've won but there's a higher chance that we'll gain better advantages because their king can no longer go and castle they can if i was them and they did that i'd just bring my king here i'd work my bishop across somehow and then just get the quick king rook here so it's nothing major if you know how to deal with it it's to you know you might want to castle that way you know and i've done that a few times and it works quite nicely the opponent thinks they're winning because your king's not castle, but all you do is simply move it up, yep, into a little space here in the centre. So he's moving his king, probably, I don't know, I think that probably would have been more active. I suppose he's thinking the bishop can just come and attack you here. Maybe that, that might have been the case, might. Okay, fair enough. Right, so... defending the pawn with the king it's not really what the kings are defined, designed for I could go and castle I think just to castle just to in the back of my head I'm going okay yeah I'm rubbing it in your face in your face that I can actually go and castle but it's also got a, a valid reason hasn't it so we could push the pawn I really want to develop more pieces uh, maybe just develop the knight now and just support the pawn. So they're moving quick. And maybe trying to get some imbalance because we're on four minutes. So I'm going to move a little bit speedier now. Let's go here. And we'll do the evaluation afterwards, really. Because that slows me down doing the talking. Uh, just bring the rook here. <laughs> Not sure about that. Okay, let's go here. Yeah, they're moving like lightning. Just move with the. Hmm. I think he's trying to win on time now rather than anything else. Oops, excuse me. Mm -hmm. 
Minuten. Mhm. fast again it's going for exchanges mm -hmm. Whoosh, ah. Yes, thank you for the game. Okay, uh, look at the analysis on that. Okay, so we had to stop talking because we were going to lose on time, big style there. All right, so looking at the rationale for each of the moves, just breaking it down. So basically, we pushed through the center looking to try and manage these squares with the pawn pretty straightforward on that score then the they push their pawn down not sure really okay so we could push through the center here now obviously trying to challenge this pawn as to whether or not it's going to take or not or we're looking to push 
through the center. Ordinarily, we like to really have an open center and work around the center rather than trying to manage the actual center. So we grab grab, that's all pretty straightforward stuff. We take with the knight because the knight is more flexible in terms of being able to mobilize and it's also managing a few more squares than what the queen would be doing. But also, taking with the queen, you have the element of the knight coming out, attacking, then the queen comes back. So you lose a momentary tempo. So whereas the knight is here, if the knight does come out, we can capture the knight if we cho chose to do so. So the knight does come out and we did say when capturing the gauge bars sometimes don't like it it's not actually changed so that's that's quite nice okay excellent and then they did capture with the pawn normally they take with the other pawn you see you know so that the queen doesn't get exchanged so we get the 20 pointer which gives us a little bit of a point advantage so it's plus one point one point four at the minute so now we can slowly try and come and attack the weak areas that it, they've created for themselves. And we castle. Doesn't like the castling process, but at, at the end of the day, felt advantageous for us. Key point being that, well, they can't castle, so we're just showing we can castle. And it is a benefit to us keeping our king safe. So they develop their knights attacking the pawn here. So we do have choices, you could push the pawn onto the knight, sometimes the computers like the pawn pushing onto the knight, but you're not developing your other pieces. And let's just see, I don't know if it is suggesting that type of thing. No, it's still gone zeros on that one, so that's fine. Okay, maybe it's asking for the bishop to come out or something, but still need to protect, protect and serve. Okay, so then the pawn comes down blocking our pawns advance so we're looking to attack the knight that's pretty straightforward and obvious move don't really need to break that down and then now we're bringing the rook here to own the file because rooks like to own open files and if we can try and take advantage of that then that's going to really stand us in good stead so maybe doubling the rooks up to maybe trying to get the knight into a position whereby it's more functional in that area maybe getting the white square bishop back around maybe coming across here at some stage once the knights disappeared all these little tiny thoughts just running through my head but they give us the option themselves so they make us they give us the position so a simple attack here smaller piece attack and a higher piece i think more times out of 10 i try and do moves that can't be blocked off simply by a pawn you know not in all cases, but in most cases, if it can be blocked off by a pawn, you're actually going to lose a tempo, but you could use that to your advantage. So this opponent could have done that for a reason, wanting to get their bishop here, wanting to get it here, you know, so that then it's, it feels a lot better. So you have to be mindful of those as well. Is it improving their opponent's position? Have a look. Yeah, okay, I can block it simply, but am I actually giving him extra weight say if you had a queen here or whatever it was and the king was here and he's got this nice diagonal on this pawn and you sent this bishop to a lovely position and then the bishop just takes the pawn and with a check on the king so you got, yeah, just be mindful of those types of things and especially if there's a rook there as well you know so then the bishop be able to take the rook so yeah in this occasion we felt safe it wasn't going to anywhere strong and at that point we would be able to just blast this pawn up and put some pressure onto the bishop yeah after we've done this once it's gone here then we can charge up if it doesn't move this pawn then obviously we would get the bishop for free because it will be trapped Whew. so that's the rationale behind that move and we bring our bishop back now basically looking for a specific area yeah, many options actually for that bishop move also excuse me a target in this pawn here activity towards this area here blocking potentially blocking the pawn from moving down but the probably the better one is this pawn pushing on here to dishevel this pawn So he's doing stuff to circumvent all of these aspects. We are still interested in doing these, these maneuvers, pushing up on this side. 
So we take because we've got a check on his king. Okay, and then they take back with their king so we can put another check on with our rook. So now the king's home alone on the other side of the board. So we're not putting too much weight on that, but the king is home alone on the other side of the board. As we can see physically, that's where it is. So now we're challenging the bishop, like we said in the earlier part. So now we're just pushing forward to see whether or not they forget themselves. We still continue because it's elevating our pawn to a very good position on the board. And now we can take the free pawn, which the bishop was protecting, probably came all the way back here to actually protect this pawn. Now it can't protect. And the opponent did take a bit longer on this particular movement here. So as you can see now, our pieces are nicely worked out, but they're not working together fully. You know, so I'm still miffed. I'm doing like a little bit of a single attack here. The pawns work together quite nicely, so I'm, I'm clapping my hands at that. But what do we do from here? Where do we go? So it was then a down, down to the opponent. The opponent actually is giving up pieces. So I'm thinking at this moment in time, hmm, maybe it's time to exchange down even more. Because the rook in its own right is not really doing anything at this moment. Didn't feel like it was um, in a strong position. So now we can start mobilizing our king. Only reason being is don't want to be opposite the rook. Just in case stuff started kicking off. He starts coming down here, starts peeling off pieces. Then my king is stuck, x-rayed by their rook. And that's looking probably moves ahead. Yeah, but it does help the king. It keeps it safe. So throughout the whole of the game, especially now we're coming towards, you'd say like this is like the mid-end game, but for our answer process, we're always in end game opening anyway. So we've got the mindset of we're wanting to be in the end game right from the start so that at least we're not losing out when it does come to the actual end game. Little quotation marks with my fingers there. Okay, so... Then they move their knight back, I wasn't too sure. I mean, basically, all chess players are led by what the opponent actually does, how they respond to whatever it is that's going on on the board. So I've moved my king because I don't want the x-ray through from his rook, okay? Even though there's nothing actually happening there, yeah, um, I could sit there and go, well, nothing's happening, but things can start happening very quickly, and if you're not really aware of it, then you're gonna come unstuck. So I push the pawn up now because I'm thinking his king is home alone. We need to start making some activity towards his king. And also, if we can block these pawns off as it's coming towards the end of the mid game in my head, um, we need to make sure that these pawns are as elevated as possible if we get the opportunity. At this moment in time, that knight move there didn't seem too problematic for us because it's moved away from his king so this is why we can establish some sort of attack process towards his king area that's the rationale behind that so he's obviously gone for a bishop attack type situation so again simplifying taking the bishop off the ball because at this moment in time the only thing i can see is the knight coming here looking for a two on one on this pawn with his rook um, I'm just thinking for the opponent in that sense. I'm saying, well, that's potentially what's going to happen. So we move the king to the side so it gives us enough space to bring our rook here to protect if need be. And it does bring the rook across, so we bring our rook across now. But this does help us because we can potentially push here now and we would have like a fork on his knight and his uh, pawn. It's not our turn yet, but that's the process. That's the angle that we're taking each move meaning something and hopefully having a bit more advantage in terms of position on the board so they do actually move their king so that does give us the opportunity to attack the knight and the pawn if the pawn does take the rook can take looking for an exchange off positionally on the board feeling comfortable that my king would be sat here in a very good attacking position knights covering this square off at the minute I mean, he could start pushing his pawns down, but I'm feeling fairly strong that my king could make inroads up to here because of the height of this pawn would be able to then mobilize it up and get promotion if it fell that way. 
so they do capture so we capture back with the rook looking for the exchange and it does so to me i'm feeling good in fact the eval bars actually agreeing with us here um so they moved their king down and i think they must have realized that something was wrong when we actually started moving the king up because we do have sites of coming here excuse me coming here to attack the pawn take that pawn off and then we'd have two linked pawns coming up here so they actually come back again so they've kind of lost a tempo by doing that particular move so we pushed up the pawn whether that was right or not it felt good to me because it's like blocking the king off the king can't come here so it's gonna have to go back a little bit so it goes back into the side now we can develop our knight looking for the exchange if he doesn't take then we can start moving the knight across here and start challenging the pawns so he does actually capture and at this point here momentarily you can always go oh i'm gonna get zugs wanged but not in this type of position if you know how to mobilize your pieces and you understand the ramifications of the height of these pawns we're too close to the other side of the board even if his king decided at some stage to start ramping down here we would get a pawn because we, our king is higher up the board so we move our king and then they start making the movements with the pawns i'm just seeing if there was any major dips here not really so then we pushed up and we grabbed and now we're looking to just charge up get the queen and that's that at that point the opponent resigned okay so movement order key position the higher up the board you can get your king more times out of 10 when it comes to sort of like an end game like this you're better off so long as you've got space to be able to go through if everything's blocked off then it's a draw but then you still have to box clever because uh, you could lose tempo by making the incorrect move so attacking the pawn here obviously has to make a decision does he take or does he leave it i mean if he moved his king back we could just take or we could push up and then we've got more space here and then we've got space for our king to move as well so i don't think there's much that the opponent could do at this stage we've established a strong position here and yeah the potential value for each of the moves was explained and utilized towards the end especially as we were running out of time we had to stay quiet and just focus on these areas of trying to get potential value for each move so that's the answer process um, in its fullest effect i think it's just a constant practice of that we're not going to get it right all the time we're, we're going to make blunders the opponent's going to be better than us at finding positions they're going to be better at us than finding the potential value for things so we're not sitting here saying oh yes we've got the answer and we can beat everybody that's not the case it's about trying to improve our games and really understand what is actually going on in the game so that we can better appreciate the quality of how we want to develop if we want to develop or how we just want to enjoy our games a little bit better.